Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. Welcome back to the Homestead Kitchen. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of canning. I got a whole bunch of apples, and this is actually just the first thing I'm going to be doing with apples um, today. I'm probably going to be working on a second thing here in a little bit. Well, when I get done with this one. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing with the apples that I have here is I'm going to be making some apple pie filling. And apple pie filling, you know, of course you can use it for pies, but you can use it for cobblers, all sorts of things. So today I'm going to make some very classic apple pie filling. Now, if you are brand new here, as I said, my name is Constance. I am a blogger, writer, homesteader, and I do at least three videos every week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. And on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, there are hundreds of recipes and articles for you to browse through. I also have a free email newsletter where I send out updates and timely recipes and sneak peeks to things upcoming at times. So be sure to sign up for that if you aren't already. Now, before I get started on the recipe, I do want to throw in here that this video is part of the Canuary canning video series. Every day throughout the month of January, there are a number of different channels participating. One of the channels is posting a video on their respective channel. And I have been putting together a playlist of all of the videos from all of the channels. I will put a link to that down below so that you can see that. Uh, if you are interested, but also not only are there fantastic canning videos, there's also a giveaway that is going on with this for a pressure canner. So I will put a link down below where you can learn about that as well. So I'm going to throw on an apron and get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to need to do to get this recipe going is to slice up and peel and core a whole bunch of apples. I'm going to need 12 cups of the apple slices. So I've got my little handy apple peeler core slicer device right here set up. I've got a big bowl of water with the citric acid or, or a ascorbic, ascorbic, whatever, acid in here to keep the apples from browning up. So as I slice the apples with my little tool, I will just drop them here into the water. I have a pot of water over on the stove heating up because I will blanch the apple slices before I jar them up. I've got my jars over there in my canner uh, getting nice and warm so that they will be ready and I'm gonna get started. guys so I have a pot of water going over here on the stove I've got my apples the slices that I drained from the liquid and I'm going to blanch my apples I'm going to do this in batches so I'm just going to take uh, about a third of them or so and very carefully drop them into the water set my timer for one minute and let them do their thing so while that is doing its thing, I've got all of my other ingredients over here that I will need for the apple pie filling. I've got apple juice, two and a half cups. This is unsweetened natural apple juice. I have um, two and three quarters of cup of sugar. I have one and a quarter cup of water. I've got my cinnamon and nutmeg over here, the seasonings. And then I have three quarters of a cup of sure gel. 
And sure gel is a special type of cornstarch that is made for canning, which I will explain in just a moment because this round of apples is done. So we scoop these out. Got a nice big bowl here. Alright, so as I was saying, um, clear gel, I think I said sure gel, clear gel, clear gel, <laughs> clear gel is a special kind of cornstarch that is made specifically for canning. If you have ever mixed up some cornstarch slurry, the cornstarch and water mixture that you would use like to thicken up a soup or a gravy or anything like that and you set the dish down for a couple of minutes before you want to add it into say your chowder and what happens the cornstarch separates it breaks from the water and creates this solid as a rock mass that you've then got to break into with a fork or a whisk or something and remix it and get it back into the liquid form again if you mix cornstarch into a, a sauce like say for apple pie filling and you can it, it's going to do the same thing if, if you use regular cornstarch. And so clear gel is a canning safe thickener that uh, you can use to make that wonderful sauce or gravy or whatever you want to call it that the apples will um, be canned in. It allows it to thicken but it allows it to do it safely. It'll stay, um, it'll stay combined instead of separating. And then also it allows heat to fully penetrate into your liquids because when you are canning, if you um, add flour or anything like that, it can cause the heat to not fully penetrate your foods and then not can safely. All right, we set this aside. Now the apples that I am using here are Fuji apples, which Fuji apples are not ideal for canning something like this because they do tend to get a little bit soft. Um, I mean, you can pretty much use any apple you want to, but the final product may not necessarily be what you want. It'll be safe, but when I make this apple pie filling, the apples will get pretty soft. Fuji apples is just what I have on hand and I didn't want them to go to waste. And so I just figured what the heck, I'll just make um, a little bit of apple pie filling. I've still got a ton more apples. This is maybe a quarter of what I've got here. I'm also going to make um, either some applesauce or apple butter. I'm gonna dehydrate some. And so with those, the uh, the texture of the apple won't really matter. I will put in the information below this video a couple apple varieties that you might want to think about if you want to make sure your apples stay nice and firm after you can them. Now I'm going to use this pot again but I'm going to go ahead and dump out the water because I don't need it. So I've got my big old pot over here this is stainless steel, non-reactive, which is what you're supposed to use when you are canning. And I'm done with that. So now I'm going to add in my water, my apple juice, my sugar, My seasonings, which my nutmeg, I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon, and then a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. And then 
then finally, let's see, I'm going to use my whisk first. Go ahead and start warming this up. Finally, I'm going to add in my clear gel. And I'm just going to whisk this together and begin heating that up. So I'm going to keep heating this until it begins to bubble and just starts to boil. Then I'm going to add in some lemon juice and I will boil it for one minute. Alright, so my sauce is beginning to bubble and thicken up. So I'm going to add in half a cup of lemon juice. And I'm going to bring this to a boil, let it boil for one minute. And then I will remove it from the heat and fold in the apples. So I removed the sauce from the heat. And now I'm going to add in my apples. And I'm basically just going to fold these in, get the apples all nice and coated, and heat it up. That sauce was boiling, so um, it's not going to be too hard to warm these apples back up. They were still pretty warm sitting there in that bowl. All right. So let me move these out of the way, and we'll get out the jars. All right, so I have my jars here ready, and I'm getting ready to jar up my apples. Now, this calls for an inch of headspace, which is the space from the top of the food to the top of the edge of the jar. Apples sometimes have a tendency to uh, seep out a little bit and make a giant mess, so I, I, I'm a little bit generous with my, um, my headspace when it comes to the apples. And the sauce if you want to call it that, um, with these apples is very thick. So I'm going to have to kind of pack them down in there and really work to make sure I get all of uh, the air pockets out of the jars. And I actually, I need to grab something other than my spoonula. So here I'm using my bubble wand to work out any bubbles that are in there. Alright, so I ended up getting six pints from this batch. And now I've got a damp rag here. I've got a little dish of white vinegar. And I'm just going to dip the rag in, wipe the rims of my jars wipe them really good because again this is sticky this is messy and we want to make sure that these jars seal well all right grab a lid and i've just got a bowl here of hot water even though many of the lid companies say that you don't have to preheat the lids anymore i just prefer to do that you know, I, I do this and I, I almost never have a seal failure. So that's just the way I do it. pieces of apple left so I will do that one here in a second.
so my apples are in the canner and I'm going to put on the lid. So the apples will now process in either a hot water bath canner or a steam canner for 25 minutes. It doesn't matter which version you use, whether it's the hot water bath or the steam canner. A steam canner, I get a lot of questions about it. It is a substitute for hot water bath canning. It is only safe to be used for high acid foods, things that you would ordinarily hot water bath can. If it is something that you would pressure can, a low acid food, you cannot process it in a steam canner like this. This is only, again, for high acid foods. When I am doing a small batch of something like six to eight pints of a high acid food, then I like to use my steam canner because it is very lightweight. It heats up very quickly because you're only using a little bit of water instead of a whole great big pot, and it's just easy to use. And so I use this quite often. And if you don't have one of these, no problem. Just use your hot water bath canner. The processing time for both is exactly the same. The only difference is the device that I am using. If you would like to get more information about steam canners, I have an article that I wrote where I thoroughly explain uh, many of the pros and cons of using a steam canner on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com and I will put a link down below where you can find that. And then I have a video where I think I explained a lot of it as well, many of the details about this. So I will put a link to that down below also. All right, my timer went off here and I just shut off my stove eye. So now I'm going to take off my canner lid and then I'll let the jar sit for five minutes to just kind of settle down a little bit. Then I will remove them from the canner and transfer them to my lined surface. So that is it for the time being. I'm going to let my jars sit here and cool down overnight. Listen for the lids to tink down and, and seal. And in the morning, I will remove the lids, test the seals, wash the jars if I need to, label them, and store them away. And I was thinking, I actually have this really easy dessert recipe that would be a great way to use one of these jars. So I think I will make that sometime this week and film it and share that video with all of you. So you'll be able to see a really super easy way that you could use some of these apples. Now I will put a printable version of this recipe on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com for this classic apple pie filling. And I will put a link to that down below if you're watching this on YouTube. So thanks for joining me here again in the Homestead Kitchen. Be sure to check out all of the other videos from all of the other channels who are participating in this collaboration. It has been a lot of fun seeing all the things that everyone is making. So that is it for today. Thanks again for joining me here. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to you all next time.